Okay, so we are here in Sheridan, Michigan, and we're gonna be visiting with Bill Simpson, who owns Simpson Funeral Home. Bill has a deep passion for making sure the final ride for a person is memorable and is part of that whole journey, that it's not just put somebody in a vehicle and take them to the cemetery, it's make that part of the event just as memorable as everything else. So we're going to chat with him about hearses, uh, specialty hearses that he has, and where he sees the future of the business. dive in to chatting with Bill about his hearses. Let's go back a little and let's go over the history of hearses. So the term hearse comes from the Middle Ages for a word that closely actually resembled hearse and it meant the candle that sat or the candelabra that was placed on top of the coffin way back in the day. However, some people say that the word also is derived from the word harrow which was a plow and because the original hearses looked like kind of a plow type structure in terms of the the spiny prongs that came up to, that you would put candles on around the body or around the coffin back in the day they said that it came from that word as well so a lot of things came together to derive that word that we now know as hearse so in the 17th century, the horse-drawn hearse originally began. And it has, it has transitioned so much over time, even though there are still horse-drawn hearses today. Now in the 19th century, Crane and Breed manufactured this metal casket that would go along with the hearses that were in working of that day. And in 1880, Rock Falls Hearse was created, and that began the hearse company as it was now. In the 19th century is when the hearse became fancy. Um, it started to get ornate with the scroll work and um, doves and flowers and all sorts of decorations on the unit itself. And so it became more of a piece of the procession rather than just this background item that nobody really paid much attention to. On May 1st in 1908, the Generalized Vehicle Company came out with the first electric motorized hearse. Now one year later, the Crane and Breed Company came out with the first gas-powered hearses. In the 1930s, there was a very classic Landau hearse, and it became popular with the Ghostbusters movie, the cartoon version, because that was the style that was used in it. And this was the first one that was really used for a hearse and an ambulance, so it was a very popular, very recognized style. There used to be something called a hearse trolley. Now this was on the tr a train, when train was a very common mode of transportation, and it was a small car that was made to carry a casket in it. And so when a body needed to be transported by train, they would put it in this hearse trolley car. Now the problem was when they got to the town that the body was going to, they couldn't take the hearse trolley out to the cemetery unless there was track laid. So for a while, some towns would lay down track out to the local cemetery so you could take the trolley car from the train station over to the cemetery. But it became too cumbersome. Um, that's when you began taking it off the train, putting it on a hearse, and then taking it over to the cemetery. So back in the 1920s, hearses were great modes of transportation for the rum runners. Why would a policeman stop a hearse to look in at the dead bodies? So it became a very underground way for bootleggers to carry their goods, is stash them in the hearse and the police weren't gonna prod too far because they didn't wanna be around the dead bodies. So it became popular 
for funeral homes to also be the ambulance in town because the vehicles were created for an ambulance or a hearse transportation. And so oftentimes, you know, I still go into funeral homes and I'll still feel find devices and back stretchers and different equipment that was stored in some of these smaller town funeral homes because back in the day they used to also be the ambulance when that vehicle was one and the same. Now in the history of hearses, there was a hearse also called a three-way hearse. So each hearse had five doors on it two on each side and one in the rear. It was called a three-way because the doors on the sides opened like this rather than, you know, like this. And so the hearse could be loaded with the casket from three different ways. The tray table inside could swing forward and swing out the front doors or it could go out the back. So it gave different loading options for a hearse. I don't see many practical senses where this might be needed. I'm sure it was cool and, and kind of um, kitschy at the time that you could do that, but I don't know in a circumstance where I would need to possibly load on a side, but I am sure it came in handy in some situations. This is Bill, and Bill owns the Simpson Funeral Home here, and you have started a collection of hearses. Yep, I have. In, in all variety. Now what, kind of in your words, why are you doing that? Why are you expounding on the original? Well, for, for me, it's all about the celebration of life. We have to go to the cemetery anyways to do mm -hmm. a burial. I believe we probably should make that memorable and special. And so if I can do that through the use of a special hearse, then I will. Mm -hmm. um, because the funeral experience needs to be memorable uh, for the family. And if you use just a traditional car, like we have three months after the service, you know, if you ask the family, well, was it a Ford or Chevy, black or blue, probably can't tell you. You yeah. use a special hearse or something that's meaningful, and they'll remember those stories for years. Now, do you have people ever say, I really wanted a blue hearse, or I really wanted a white one. Does the color ever matter? Does the style ever matter? Or do they just kind of go with whatever? No, I, I've, I've, I've personally never had a family request a specific color of hearse or make of hearse um, other than the, the motorcycle hearse or the car hearse. Okay. Um, so give me some information about the hearse that you use. What is the style and year sure. and... This is a 1999 uh, Cadillac Seville. Okay. Um, actually, I just bought it this summer. Oh, okay. Um, I found it in Arkansas, and it hasn't seen snow yet. So I'm excited about that being in Michigan, because um, there's no salt then yes. either. Um, so we drove down and got it. Okay. Um, it's got 55,000 miles on it. Again, I'm, I'm, a be I'm a believer that it doesn't so much matter that it's a brand new 2019 whatever with no miles. As long as the car is clean, um, in good shape, the family doesn't really, on a, a traditional you know, car hearse, they don't really care that it's a Cadillac Ford, white, silver, gray, black, um, just as long as it, you know, their loved one is, is treated with dignity and respect. Do you ever see yourself switching over to the van style with panels on it, away from the traditional? Currently, no. I, I, I'm never one to say never, um, but I can't. No, I think you know, car. But I have I have a lot more in me yet for as far as different styles of verses. Um, so I'm going to go that route. Okay. Um, do you take this on removals when you go bring somebody into your care, or no. do you use a removal vehicle? We use a removal vehicle, and the and the reason is is we're in such a rural county around here. Yeah. There's a lot of back roads and. I don't have a backup camera on this, and so you get sometimes in these situations where you've got to get into a, a driveway and it's narrow. Um, if it's a home death, there's typically a, a lot of family or maybe first responders, so there's a lot of vehicles to move around, mm -hmm. and it's just it, it, it's not conducive to getting in, in and out of the situation gracefully 
uh, with such a large vehicle, uh, so we use a removal vehicle. If I were to say, think of a famous hearse, what would pop into your mind? A famous hearse? Yeah. Probably Lincoln's hearse. Um, the, it was just very ornate, the, the decoration, um, I mean, it was just very stately. Um, to me, that's, you know, it was a special hearse and it, it's just something that's pretty cool. All right, so one of the questions that was posed was why does this whole window thing exist on a hearse? Why can you open it? Why does it close? So I took to Google, Bill and I discussed because there really isn't a specific answer. Back in the day when hearses and ambulances were one and the same, there was a need for it to open and close, to talk to the people in the back, if there was somebody in the back, and to know what was going on. But why are new hearses being built with it? So what was your thought, Bill? My only thought was maybe so you can keep the cabin um, driver compartment uh, air conditioned or heated without having to heat the whole vehicle. But honestly, I don't know. And then it would open then so that let's say you were on a road trip or maybe you had the body and flowers in there for a longer duration like a drive you could then open to let heat or let the air conditioning into the back to regulate the back along with the front or to keep the stink out if there's somebody extra smelly in the back i guess um, so no exact answer which i know you guys hate when i have no exact answer but on this one I think we don't have a specific one for you.